We're here at ACE 2019 with Victor Vigiani, and uh, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Can you tell us more about your research into the alien presence on the Earth? Well, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, long, uh, a long story. It uh, began in, heck, 1975. That's when I first began to become interested in this. And ever since then, uh, I've been involved with uh, the MUFON to begin with in the early 80s. And after that, I began to realize uh, that this issue really wasn't about lights in the sky. It was about the lies on the ground. And that meant that there was a political component um, of, uh, to this whole issue. And that really kind of took over all of my research. And from that point, uh, realizing that the political implications and the ways that this whole UFO, ET, UAP issue, whatever you want to call it, emanated from a political source, the implications emanate from a political source, captivated my imagination with respect to uh, government secrecy. And uh, I, I soon began to learn that um, constitutionally, governments have the right to keep secrets from, from the people, but uh, they don't have the right to lie to their people. And that supposition or that position uh, captured my imagination to the point where I needed to cut through the lies and find out, first of all, where the lies were, and then in some way try to rectify uh, how we tell the story, how we develop a narrative to counter uh, the government and the way that they are lying to the people about this issue. And when I say government, I don't mean you know, the, the poor and an unfortunate people sitting in, in Congress or, or, in, or in Parliament. They know nothing about this issue. I'm talking about the, the larger infrastructure uh, that, that exists behind the government. Okay, thanks. Um, so who do you believe has contributed the most, or what event has contributed the most to revealing the truth about UFOs? Uh, the who and the what, that's, that's good. That's a good question. Um, to, 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 I guess, buttonhole one or two individuals would be very difficult. Let me start with the event first. I think one of the, the events was the uh, Disclosure Project event in 2001 that the Stephen Greer initiated. Uh, that, I think, was a milestone and a benchmark with respect to uh, disclosure, whatever you want to call that whole emanation of, of information. And I think the Disclosure Project and uh, press hearing, the Washington, D.C. National Press Club, was a benchmark. So that's a significant event. Uh, moving forward from that, uh, there really was no significant large event until, as far as I'm concerned, uh, 2013 when Stephen Bassett uh, held uh, his uh, citizen hearings on, on disclosure at the Washington, D.C. Press Club in 2013, April and May, which I attended five days, all five days of it. I think that event and the disclosure um, uh, press conference in 2001 were the two major events that I think made the UFO issue rise to the surface and become a political, politically recognized uh, uh, situation that the human, the human family needed to pay attention to. So those two events, uh, I think, were very key in it. And Stephen Greer and Stephen Bassett, I think, were instrumental in, in that. And they're not the only ones. There's a lot of other great people. Stanton Friedman here in Canada. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the, the work that Richard Dolan does. Uh, Grant Cameron, there are a number of people that uh, fit into the whole matrix of uh, operationalizing the whole um, uh, issue of disclosure. Well, what do you think is the future for disclosure? I think the future for disclosure will not be an open door slam shut situation, a one time event. I think it's going to be an evolving situation. We're going through that right now. I think disclosure with a, a small d. Uh, is something that's going to happen over a period of time as we're witnessing uh, with respect to the U.S. Navy revelations and the Pentagon revelations. I think uh, I, my opinion is that uh, there, there are some people, individuals or factions within the government, behind the government, who want this information out. They have a vested interest and what that vested interest is, we don't know, but they have an interest in letting this information, this is why it's happening. It's not happening by any kind of mistake or just people randomly throwing, uh, throwing us a bone about the information. This is happening in a concerted, very, very um, uh, orchestrated manner. 
uh, so that uh, the, the public becomes desensitized to the whole issue and the media picks this stuff up and, and relays it to the public to a point where uh, individuals who know nothing about this information uh, turn their heads and say, what are these people talking about? And they try to find out more about it. That's how I think disclosure is going to happen. It'll be a slow process and eventually there will be the recognition that A, we are uh, not alone in the cosmos and second of all, we are being engaged by off-world civilizations. The when that's going to happen, <laughs> it's like asking the question, how long is a piece of string? You just don't know. Can you tell us more about the, the podcast that you do? Well, I've developed, uh, because of the, the, the news um, research that I do uh, with Zeland Communications, I've attempted to become, and I think I am, I can, I'm safe in saying that I'm the only organization, um, uh, news organization, news service in Canada that consistently puts out information regarding disclosure on the whole UFO ET issue. And that to me is, is the, the, the basis of the foundation of my idea to develop podcasts surrounding what Zeland Communications does. And uh, I've called the podcast The Files of the Disclosure Agency. And I have uh, two or three uh, podcasts in the can, so to speak, ready to, uh, to disseminate. Just have to find a, a good host to, to do it. So. Uh, I'm very enthusiastic about it. Uh, I love the recording aspect of it. I love the editing aspect of it. And to kind of coalesce the information that I have in a very succinct and dramatic way. Uh, I've had some really good comments about the nature of the podcast, the, uh, the, the fabric of it, uh, the sound of it. And I think that's all kind of part of how you engage the audience. And I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a great thing for Zeland Communications and for people who like to listen to that kind of stuff. Will we be seeing more of you on Earth Mystery News? I hope so. I hope so. Uh, Earth Mystery News has a, has, a, has a place in, in my heart because I think that the intentions and, and the way that uh, Earth Mystery News handles their information is, is, um, is very, very favorable to the way I feel. about. I, I feel the synchronicity with what's going on uh, with Earth Mystery News. And uh, I think there's, a, there's definitely a whole lot of possibilities that we can engage and, uh, and make this thing happen. Well, thank you very much, Victor. You're most welcome. Th thank you very much.